Uh, please welcome to the stage the CEO of Mountain Vista Medical Center, Mr. Ter Tony Marinello, and uh, the MD and cardiologist there, Chris Lichtenwalter. Come on up. Hey, Tony, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Have a seat. And Chris, good to see you. Thank you so much. I'm kind of tethered to my desk here, so yeah. I apologize. <laughs> Welcome. It's a tough, uh, that's a tough act to follow right it there. sure is. Great cause. Um, do you have a video? <laughs> we don't have a video. Okay. We're kind of working on a song and dance for dance. you. All right, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Part. Awesome. Well, talk to us about uh, why you're here. Well, we're here to promote um, Heart Healthy Month. Um, we are, uh, with cardiology, is a big service. As you know that, you know, women's health and things with heart attacks and technology and stuff. And we're just proud of Mount Vista. What we have is a full service cardiology program. It does open heart surgery and ca cardiac cath labs and interventional cardiologists. This is why I brought Dr. Lichtenwalter, who's brought several procedures, cutting edge procedures to Mountain Vista when he arrived a few years back. And we're very happy to have him here. Unfortunately, I was able to experience that kind of situation. And I have to say, their group and I'm indebted to them forever. They do a great job. So you're, you were a patient? A couple times. Wow. Yeah. Talk about believing in the product. You got it. <laughs> you got to be able to sell. You got to have the passion, Mark. You know. Yeah, yeah that's Without it. the passion, you can't sell it. Well, that's awesome. Well, <laughs> well I didn't know that, but uh, you look darn good. It's, it's his fault. It's his fault. <laughs> well, Chris, talk a little bit about uh, this, um, and, I, and I like the cutting edge. I like that. It's kind of a double yeah, entendre. Instead of the state of the art, let's go cutting edge. Uh, talk about what you uh, what you're bringing to um, the clinic. So um, I'm an interventional cardiologist, which means that I basically do the plumbing of the heart. I do the balloons and stents through little holes in the groin or the radial artery. Um, that's one of the newer trends as we go in through the wrist rather than through the groin. It's a little bit more comfortable for the patient. We do that at Mountain Vista. <laughs> um, I've helped bring that, uh, bring that there with some of the other cardiologists uh, to allow us to open up blocked arteries. Uh, some of the other things is that we've kind of gotten away from some of the more invasive things. I mean, bypass surgery, open heart surgery is still something that is utilized and still something that is beneficial for a lot of patients. But sometimes after they've had bypass surgery or um, maybe they don't want to undergo that invasive of a procedure, people will have blocked arteries. Well, we've always been good at treating those with balloons and stents if they're not 100% blocked. But when they're 100% blocked and they've been blocked for a long, what, long time, it's much more difficult to get open. And that's, that's one of the things that I brought to Mountain Vista that's been starting up throughout the country over the past several years where we can open up these 100% blockages, either going through it the normal way the blood goes or going through the body's own collaterals that it's made to get the blood going around. So you go backwards in one groin, through a blockage all the way around backwards and out the other, and then you can balloon it open and put stents and, and really make it make a beneficial change in these patients' lives and they feel a lot better all without open heart surgery. Wow. Um, did you have a balloon, Tony? I had several balloons, no. <laughs> no, and you, you, had a, yeah. you had a party balloon, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, I did. A he, you were kind of like in the groin action versus no, the No, no, the, okay. the groin. See, that's just, not only is that must be painful, it's painful just to hear about it. Yeah. It's actually not very painful. A balloon in your groin is not painful. Well, it's a little small hole, about two <laughs> millimeters, is usually what we work through. Oh, perfect. Most patients afterwards, they can't even see where we went in. Well, <laughs> pardon me if I don't look. <laughs> um, so this is heart, what did you say, this is Heart Healthy Month? Yes, I mean, we had an event just recently here, last weekend of Heart Healthy. We do a lot of free screenings, physician seminars, for the public to come out and actually learn and be able to ask the questions to physicians, because so many times when you're in the office setting, you don't know, but when you get to a seminar, you get to see the doc, you almost get to test drive a little bit, you get to feel what's going on. Um, I know with Dr. Lickenwalter's practice alone is one of the, not just to promote it, but when you sit down and, whether you're in a profession or not, you, you don't understand what's really going on. He takes the time to draw it out, the picture, and he shows you in layman's terms so we understand it. With his leadership out of our chairman, uh, as the chairman of the cardiology committee, we've recently, you know, we've got awards for accredited chest pain center and chest pain receiving center. And the national standard for STEMI, which is a active heart attack, is less than 90 minutes, but we're less than an hour at Mount Vista. So with collaboration with EMS and the leadership of the physician panel, that's what we've gotten to that standard. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Less than an hour for a, for a whole procedure. Well, yeah, to get into right. the table. 
From the time they hit the door of the emergency room with the active heart attack, 100% acute blockage, to the time my balloons across their blockage and their arteries open is less than an hour, generally. Wow. Do you have a little clock on the wall, like, a, <laughs> like at the drive-thru at In-N-Out Burger? So uh, we don't have a clock. Sad that we, I know what an In-N-Out Burger drive-thru looks but like. But we do pay attention. Yeah. We know when they hit the door, and we know, um, you know you're trying to get it open as quick as you can and as safe right. as you can. The sooner you get it open, then the sooner the heart's getting, the heart muscle's getting blood and the less damage that occurs. So if I was gonna uh, have you maybe be a doctor, I'd interview you. Um, <laughs> so let me ask you a couple questions, doctor. Did, did, you, uh, did you go to school? I did. <laughs> For a little bit. Okay, good. Where, <laughs> I, uh, if you said no, I'll, I did. Was over. Uh, <laughs> I did undergraduate training at the University of Oklahoma in chemical engineering, and then I went to the University of Texas Southwestern in Dallas for my uh, wow. medical school residency and fellowship. And then you just kept working your way west, yeah. and here you are. Well, that was uh, 12 years in Dallas, and then I came out here about three and a half years ago. Oh well, good. Um, I, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, put this first picture up here now. Would this be a heart healthy mm -hmm. diet? Would something like that be good? That would generally be pretty good for your heart. What do you mean pretty good? <laughs> what, what would, would something be bad for, about that? Or no, that would just be? That would be good. That would be good, okay. What about, because uh, I see the nice, the nice heartbeat. Yeah. What about the next one? Would this be? Um... <laughs> that would be good for my business. <laughs> 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 and there are hamburgers in the back, so yeah. you guys get some of them. <laughs> that was a little laughter yoga right there, wasn't it? <laughs> well, that is, and speaking of, uh, this kind of ties in, exercise on the, um, on the heart, overrated? No, exercise <laughs> is definitely, definitely good. Okay, um, good. The more you can do, the better without injuring yourself in other ways as you get a little older and have arthritis, but the more exercise, the better. Generally, we say 30 minutes four to five times a week of moderate exercise at least. Okay, good. Anything else you'd like to share real quick? Otherwise, I'm gonna uh, see if anybody has a question. I bet there's some, uh... it's, oh, there we go. Yes, sir. So the from, question, let yeah. me repeat the question for those who didn't hear. What's the recovery time for a procedure? Are they staying in for days or is it quick outpatient? So, or? so for what I do, going in through either the wrist or the groin, if there's nothing to fix, if I don't put any stents in, they go home about four hours afterwards, somewhere between two to four hours afterwards. I tell them not to lift anything heavy for about a week. They can shower the next day, don't soak in a tub or a pool for a week, but other than that, they can do whatever they want. And by a week, there's no limitation. If I end up putting a stent in, I generally watch them overnight, and they go home by 6.30 or 7 the next morning. Wow. It's unbelievable. It's come a long way, hasn't it? It really has. All right. I know this is, I'm not going to hold you to this, but 10 years from now, what kind of crazy stuff's going to be going on? I think that um, the trend in cardiology is getting less and less invasive, and the, and the newest thing now is actually um, valve repair through small holes in the groin. Okay, you can do aortic Again valve replacement. Again with the groin. <laughs> yeah, I know, um, but it, it's 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 an option it's rather than Day. Come on, rather man. than opening up the uh, opening up the chest for like an, uh, to replace the aortic valve. We can go in with tubes um, and deliver that there. It's getting better for the other valves. It's just not quite there yet, and that's going to continue to to improve as the technology gets better and better. I can't help but notice when we talk about the groin, the women laugh a lot harder than the men do at that. <laughs> but, uh, well, that's great stuff. Anybody, uh, that was a great question. Anybody have another question? Yes, sir. How does that feel diet? Uh, that's a, a great question, and we could kill way too much time talking about that. Um, he asked what the ideal diet is for a healthy heart. Uh, what I tell my patients is that you should use common sense. I won't ever tell a patient that there's something that they can't have. Um, because if, if I tell them that their favorite food is pizza and they can't have pizza, they're going to listen to me for about a week, and then they're never going to listen to me again. Um, but it's about moderation. It's about watching the number of calories you take in, limiting your fats a little bit, um, getting the right balance of fruits and vegetables. Uh, and, and just if it seems to make sense, then it's generally the right way to go. I don't do any of the extreme diets. Um, one thing that somebody had asked earlier, um, when we were just out there was about chocolate in the heart. And that kind of ties into your question is, 
uh, is there is some, some studies out there that actually suggest a beneficial effect of chocolate. It seems to be most with the dark chocolate, and I kind of wanted to bring that up on Valentine's Day. And there are some studies, especially in, in, in Europeans, that have shown lower rates of heart attack and lower rates of stroke in those that, that consume a little bit of dark chocolate a day. But that's a little bit, not, not a lot. <laughs> and that kind of falls into the balance and, and the, the appropriate proportions. And they say red wine too, right? Red wine. So there, a big box of chocolate and a <laughs> box of red wine. Yes. Um, there, are, there are beneficial effects of, of alcohol. It, it's been best studied with wine. Red seems to be a little bit better than the others. But there's probably a little bit of an effect on all alcohol. It does lower your blood pressure a little bit, uh, improves your cholesterol panel. Uh, it seems to help the way that your blood vessels work, and it seems to lower your, your risk of heart attack and death. But we're a society of excess, and so <laughs> we have a problem with doing one glass, and it's one glass, not one big glass, of wine a day or one to two glasses a day, and not um, you know, three to four or five, because you hit a point where as you get to more on a daily basis, you have detrimental effects to the heart. Great. Well, I appreciate you uh, coming in, and what a great tie-in to uh, the chalk that everybody's going to have later on today. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming in, and uh, we've got a world-class facility right here in the Valley, so uh, thanks, thanks for that. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Tony. Thank Good you. seeing you. Thanks, Doc.